Good morning, everybody. So this is a little different. You'll notice I don't have the face cam up, and if you're watching this as a recording, you'll notice that it is now at 1080p instead of 720. Trying to get the full detail here, and no, we are not in Project Zadruga. Uh, we're going to be answering a question for a fellow on the Unreal Answer Hub. <clears throat> so, person here is trying to make a piano puzzle. Okay, so as he has explained it in his post, here's our character, our piano, and a wall covering. Okay, when the character comes up to the piano, doo -doo, this nice little overlay pops up, and you can select what keys to press. If you press the correct sequence, you can then step through this wall, uh, my recommendation is doing something a bit more visual with it, either making it invisible or turning it like a hidden entrance turning. Okay, I'm so used to doing hand actions. I'm doing them here now, even though we don't have the face cam set up. Okay, but let's get um, let's get started. Uh, this bit of code here for you, Rush Jet. I'm not sure that's gonna work, but we're gonna try it. We're gonna set it up how you currently have it, and then we're gonna go from there. So, Unreal Engine, what do we need? So he's running 2D, we're gonna run it 3D because there's really not much functional difference. So we're gonna make ourselves a character. Okay, so that's our player. Okay, we're gonna make ourselves a cube out here. This cube already out here will be our piano. So, do 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 do, piano, and a trigger box. Uh, I don't often work with level blueprints. That's not something I've started doing yet. So please bear with me if this is super, super horrible rush jet. Yeah. So there's our piano. You've got your keypad there, blah, 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 whatever. And then we want another cube out here. We are going to stretch that a bit. And this is going to be our opening in the wall, which goes down to a secret hidden basement. Woohoo! Okay, let's move that up. And over. Okay. So the wall behind the piano has a thing on my drive. Okay. So. Let's get to our. We'll drop our go into our player our player will be a ball because we have got too many cubes out there already so we're gonna have a spherical player and we are going to make a couple key inputs so let's see we want to and let me just make sure my audio is coming through clearly yes I am talking Woohoo! okay so we want to go to edit project settings and input there we go so i'm going to do an axes map so this will be four and back it's a forwards and backwards movement side movement and action key okay so this way in case you haven't figured this out yet rush jet setting up an input here lets you then rebind it later in case you have to so on our action input we are going to do e not a gamepad we want a controller e Okay, I believe that's what you have your setup as. 
For the forward, we want a W. Okay, and then we're going to add a negative one scale and our S. Got some sweet night step going in the background, but I can't listen, let you all listen to it because then copyrights and stuff. Woohoo! Okay, so here we're going to do A because that doesn't show up a bunch. And D. And there we are. Okay, so forward and back, side to side, action key, perfect. Okay. So we're going to do four back, okay? And then we're going to grab our side. <clears throat> and we are going to add our action key, okay? Okay, actually, we're going to do action key on the level blueprint, just like he has it. But we'll just put our character movement here. And then we want mouse, 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 mouse. Mouse X, I believe, is what I'm looking for. Mouse values, mouse events, mouse X, that's what I want the event of the mouse moving. So we're going to add um, controller add no, oh come on, what is it? It's an add rotation. And then when I see it from there We want to add actor world rotation. Yay, okay. What happens if we type in movement? Because that also does a bunch of stuff. And what if we do movement and we want to add movement? Add force, add movement input. That's what we want for those. Add input rotation. No, okay. So we are going to break our rotation here. So split the structural pin and we are going to add to the yaw. Yay. And target self because we're moving our actor. Okay. So and there is our mouse movement. Let's comment everything. Let's see. Mouse look. Okay. And then we are going to add to this pawn. And in the world direction. So scale value, world direction, we want to get actors forward vector. And sorry I'm not doing this in 2D for you, Rush Jet, but 3D is what I am vastly more familiar with. So we're just going to quickly set up my things. And please, people, don't think this means I'm getting into tutorials. I might answer a few questions that I'm interested in, but otherwise, yeah, this is not going to be a regular thing. Okay, so we're going to do that. Okay, so this is our WS movement, so our forward and backwards movement. 
this here we are going to get right vector um if that's get right vector i think i screwed up my things okay so we want to do a edit editor preferences and no nope, not editor preferences sorry edit and project settings and input Doo -doo -doo. And then on our axis map, our side, we want to make sure D, which is our right, is set to 1. And our other one is set to negative 1. Perfect. Okay. And then we're going to comment that to strafing movement. Okay. And I like to test after each step. So going to compile, make sure there's no errors, save, and we're going to bring our player right out there. Perfect. And we are going to go to our... What am I looking for? I will just, on our player, make that auto-possess. So, possess, auto-possess player. Player zero, because this will be a single player test. So, play. Hey, look, that works. Our mouse is not working though. Why our mouse is not working? I've got no clue. But hey, okay. So let's add a camera to this guy. Add. Camera. There we go. We aren't going to do anything fancy for spring arms. This is just kind of a, a test. Oh, that's not what we want. We want to play in a new window. Perfect. Mouse X. Current value zero, okay. I'm just gonna quickly open one of my other projects and see what I'm doing wrong here. But anyway, so that's that. Now let's go to our level blueprint. Okay. So. Open level blueprint. So we want to do an on hit event. So where is our components that are already out here? It's not showing them to me. Okay. So I'll select my box here. Clear possession and we want to make a on overlap event. Okay, so trigger box. Blueprint. Level blueprint. Again, guys, I don't often work with level blueprints, so. You want trigger box. Create a reference to trigger box. And we want a begin overlap. On after begin overlap event. Perfect. Okay, so that's how we do it. So we are going to 
find this to an overlap. So we want a... Is it begin play here, or do we want... Yes, there we go. Event begin play. We are going to bind that overlap to our new event. Okay. So then when that happens, we are going to create a widget. which we do not have yet okay so actually let's go make our widget so we need that in place okay has my other project loaded yet yes it has let's go look at my player and see where i screwed up Doo -doo -doo -doo. action character rotation Make rotator. Okay, that's what we need to do. Is make a rotator. And let's see if that does it for us. So if we go to player, and here we um, break that link, we recombine these, and we want to make rotator. And we want that on the yaw axes. Frequent. Let's test that. Nope. Okay, well, that's fun. Supposed to add location, add world rotation. That's what I meant. Add rotation, add actor location, add actor, add rotation. Okay, you know what? It's not necessary. You don't really need to turn them around right now. So we're going to get rid of our mouse look. Because this is meant to be a 2D game. And we're going to move our camera. So let's move our camera then to do a view more like... Something like that, sure. Perfect. Okay. Let's test our overlap. So we want to open our level blueprint. And on overlap, we just want to do a print to make sure it's firing. I'm gonna print hello. Nice friendly overlap box. Hello, 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 perfect. Okay. So, we are going to make a new widget, which is under user interface. I always forget you have to scroll down. Widget blueprint. And. Piano, what did he call that? Let's go look at our friend Rush Jets thing here. He is making a thing called Piano Prompt Widget. Okay, let's keep the same names where we can. Piano Prompt Widget. Okay. Now we're going to make a few buttons here. OK. 
Okay, just some nice, you know, keys. Sure. Come on, do 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 do. They aren't going to be pretty piano keys, that's for sure. Okay, and how many units did he have? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So we've got seven of these things. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And we're just going to align these a little nicer. There we go. And I'm going to put those inside of a panel. And that's just going to be its own... Do, 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 do. Ah, let's do a horizontal box. Okay. So we're going to do... But a... but B, and so on and so forth. E F N G. Where's our last one? Okay. I drop these all into this horizontal box, and that's gonna keep them nice and together for us, and then we can move them as a group. Yay! And that horizontal box is horrible, so we want it to fill. No. You want it to auto size to the content that's in it. Okay. Why are those not size to content? That's what we want to do. Perfect. We want these to fill. This way we're going to get some automatically sized keys from this. Okay. So we'll do something like that. I really don't want to drag that around. I want to... There we go. Yeah, the shift key doesn't make that move any faster for me. Moving, 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 moving. All the keys. Okay. And then this can be prettied up with more padding in between the keys and all that silliness, but we aren't going to bother. And then we are going to do a 
text box. I'm going to drop that inside a key. Text box A. I'm going to just paste into each of those a text box. B, C, I should just turn on caps lock so I don't have to keep hitting shift. And I still hit shift so I got a lowercase E. A, B, C, D, let's learn my alphabets. E. F and G. Okay, there we go. So let's compile, save that. So, when we overlap this, we're going to go back to our level blueprint. When we overlap this, we are going to create widget and we are going to create a widget of piano prompt widget. And there we go. Okay. The owning actor will be the overlapped actor. Ah, it's not going to give me the reference. Not really necessary. Uh, we are going to add to viewport. And the user widget we're adding to viewport is this one. Yay. Okay. Now, this is where RustJet was having a bit of a hard time understanding what I was doing. So, what we're going to do is we are going to cast to the piano widget. Okay. And one of the important steps that you missed RustJet is plugging in this pin. And that's the error you're seeing on your end. Okay. So when we begin overlapping the trigger box, it's going to put this up on screen. You have it by a button press. Great. You do your thing. I'm just going to have it automatically happen. Okay. And as that piano widget, we need to set a variable, which I forgot to set up. So we're going to go back to our piano widget over to our graph and We've got all those button variables. We now need a um, uh, what do we want to call this one? So it's a reference. We're going to do reference, and we're just going to call it a reference cube. Okay, we're going to keep it simple. And we're going to name our wall block just cube. Okay, that one's just cube. Piano top, so they're easier to reference. Piano bottom. Okay. Cube. Yay, it's the only cube now. Okay. Do, 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 do. So we'll grab these back now. Okay, so reference cube. Now on our, back on our um, level blueprint, after we cast, we want to set ref cube. Okay, Except for that is the wrong variable type, so we need to set that up as a what is the cube right now? Static mesh? Static mesh component. Okay. Static mesh component reference. Okay. I think that's what we're needing. 
Static mesh component, yes. Okay. So, we'll come back up and to our level blueprint. And we want to copy this trip. Uh, nope, we want a cube. Create reference to cube. And it is a static mesh actor. Okay. So we have to set this to I think if we just use an actor reference, we will still be able to plug that in, but we'll soon find out here. So that should be an actor reference. Static mesh actors still act as actors. Okay? So we're setting the reference cube Okay, we're putting the cube reference into it. Now, that resides on this piano prompt. So, as the piano prompt widget, not as the level blueprint, which would be the self-reference you're seeing there. So, we want to do bloop, that. And it's giving you an error here that you don't need to cast. You do. I think that's just a bug in 13.2. Old 13 as well, or 4.13, I guess, whatever. Okay, so there we go. So that's that. Now, the rest of the puzzle, I'm going to take care of on the widgets. So, these fun buttons, we want an on-clicked event for each of them. C, D, E. F, G. Okay, so on clip. Perfect. I'm just going to move those all a little closer together. Just make it a tad easier to work with, you know? Okay. Now, what Rushjet is doing, and we're going to go back to his original post here, is when a button is pressed, it sets a Boolean value. Which isn't a bad idea. You're partway there, man. But with that, you can only tell if it's been pressed. Not in what order it's been pressed. Okay, so that is going to give us a bit of a um, bit of an issue. So what I am going to suggest we do is go back to a variable. Okay, we're going to add two new variables or arrays, variables of the type array, and we're going to do the correct input. Okay, and that will be an array. Uh, of course, it's going to be an array. It's going to be of uh, the array. What do we want to do? Text. We could do like a um, make um make string I know there's a oh context tense sensitive and let's try a text Set texture, da 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 da, set brush, not what I'm looking for. Can we make text? Creates a literal F text.
Okay. Make literal text. That will work. Okay, so we're going to have to do that a few times, but yes, that should work for us. So, <clears throat> we're going to make this of text type. Okay, so this is our correct input, and it's an array. So now we have to compile to set it up, and what is our correct input? Correct input for the DE, so debab, 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 debab. Okay, so there is our array. This is saying this is the keys that have to be pressed and in what order. Starting at a base count, of course. Okay, so there's our correct text. We are going to duplicate that. And we are going to put that as um, input keys. Sure, let's do that. So we'll change this to correct keys. And the keys that were input by the player. So correct keys have that. Input keys, we want nothing. Perfect. Okay. And doo -doo -doo -doo. can I set the length of this variable? You know what? We aren't going to worry about length because we're going to be doing some different checks. So, input keys. So, we need to get that reference. Okay, there's the variable we're working with. And we want to add, add to the variable. Straighten that arm. So we want to add to our input keys variable. And what we want to add is A. Okay. Uh, next thing we want to do is we want to get that yeah we want to get that um index number so when we add a new part this is going to give us what number it is in the list okay and we want to check if that equals so if an integer is equal to another integer does that equal four <clears throat> okay so is it the fourth index which would actually be our fifth thing and if so, we want to do a branch. So, if so, then we're going to run our check. So we want a new custom event, and we're going to call this key checker. Okay, so if it is the fifth key you press, we are going to run key checker. Okay, so this way, when you click a key, it's going to add it to a list of keys. It is going to check if that is the fifth key you've pressed. And if not, it's going to do nothing. You can just enter more keys. If it is the fifth key, it is going to run the key checker, which we'll deal with later. So this here we now have to duplicate. I'm just going to straight that, move that up, move that, something like that. Straighten, straighten.
straight and make all this really nice looking. There we go. And then we'll straighten. We'll move it all out just a little bit like that. And move it down. And we're going to grab the rest of these and move them down so we've got space for them. Okay, and we're going to straighten to that. Add another one of these. Straighten. Like, in reality, you could make this, since we're doing it over and over again, um, we could make this whole bit here a macro. And then really just, um, just deal with this here, the literal text, and the macro. But, you know, we... We're doing this kind of quick and dirty. So, we aren't going to worry about making it that pretty. So, there is our key inputs. Okay. So, this one has to be... B... It, <laughs> B should be B. Yay! See, so we just have to go change all these literal text. E. E. And we've got to make sure that whatever content, or whatever, um, you know, state we place the letters at, like, it is going to be context sensitive. Or not context sensitive, but, um, case sensitive. So we've got to watch our cases that I've entered all of these as lowercase and that in our correct keys we have entered all of them as lower text. Okay, so there we go. So we've got all those. So those are our key presses. Let's grab all them. C, key, presses, add text to Array if five keys have been pressed, run checker. Okay, and this is all on the widget. Remember that, guys. Making a piano puzzle. Okay, how long have we been at this now? 43 minutes. Cool. Okay, I know there's been a bit of me being an idiot and not putting the right stuff in where it should be, but oh well. So, now we're gonna do a for each loop, and we're gonna do it with a break, okay? And for each of the input keys, So, this is getting the input keys. Now I'm just going to straighten this, make it nice and clean. And on that input key, we're going to compare it to correct keys. So we also got to get correct keys. Uh, we are going to get from correct keys the same index number. So, what this is doing it's saying, okay, from input keys, if, so from input keys, the first key that's entered, what is the first key that is entered from correct keys? Okay. And then we're going to run an equals. Not a plus, sorry, an equals. No, not an equal integer. Equal will turn context sensitive back on. There we go. Okay, so, and we're just going to move some things around. 
So from the input keys that are entered is the key number. So like it's my first press, my second press, my third press, etc., etc. And we're going to compare it to the correct keys of the same index number. Are they equal? Okay. So that's what we're checking. From this list, does it equal what's in the same spot on this list? Okay. And then we're going to run a branch. Oh, if. I always type in if because it's an if statement. They call it a branch. I don't know why. It is an if statement. So if they are equal, we're going to do nothing. Okay. So if these are equal, great. Keep going through this. Keep looping through this. If it is false, though, if it is false, we want to clear array. Okay? Okay? So we want to clear out the input keys array because we're resetting it. And we want to come back and break this check. Okay, so actually let's move this. Do, 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 do. Something like that, okay? So, if one of the keys does not equal what it's supposed to be, we're going to stop checking. And we're going to then clear the input key so that you can try again. And you know what, just to make that more clear, let's print try again. <clears throat> okay. So this is our check. So we're going to clear input array and uh, do the puzzle fail dialog. So this one here, you could have another widget pop up or you could print the string or you could like have the screen flash or like a rustle but nothing happens whatever you choose to do for your um feedback to the player and this is our c check if input keys match correct sequence if I'm spelling things wrong, yeah, that happens. Okay, so this here, if something does not match, it breaks the array, okay? And it clears all the stuff, okay? However, though, if it gets all the way to the end and it completes, okay, so this is our array's completed. It has not been stopped. It's gotten all the way to the end. So everything has been matched. All the proper key presses have been matched. Okay. Then we are going to cast to um, cube. Okay. First we'll get this reference cube out. And we'll... Cast to scene capture cube. No. So that's where we're going to have an issue here, okay? So to make that something that we can deal with, we want to make it a blueprint. 
And sure. We'll just do it cube blueprint. Perfect. Whatever. So we got cube blueprint. So we're going to go back to our widget. And we are going to cast to cube blueprint. Okay. And we want this to be a, yes, still an actor reference. Okay, perfect. Okay. And remember, we set this reference to the cube when someone overlaps. So we'll get our blueprints for our level blueprint open. So we need to get ref cube ref cube underscore blueprint. There we go. So we get that reference on our level blueprint and then we punch that in there. Okay. So when someone overlaps, it's going to create a widget for us. Okay. Then uh, if the, yeah, and it's going to pass the reference for the cube or the wall spinny bit or the floor or whatever to that cube's very, or to the, um, widget's variable right here, reference for the cube. So now when we check our puzzle, we can then, sorry, I've got loud music playing in my ears right now and it's getting a little bit distracting. Okay. So then with that reference that we've saved, we can cast to that cube and we can say set visibility of our cube. No, not of a widget. So we want to, as our cube blueprint, set visibility Set actor hidden game. There we go. That'll do it for us. Set that to true. And we'll set collision. Set actor enable collision. And our target is our cube reference again. So that's how the casting system works. So we've got to bring as our cube, we are going to now set its collision to false. Okay. And you know what? We're actually going to do something else here. We are going to d run a, a sequence. Okay, just to order some stuff around differently. We're going to run a sequence. So this stuff still all happens, but after that stuff's happened, we are going to run another event. Okay, so this here is hide cube and set collision if puzzle passes, okay? So if the puzzle is all correct, blah, 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 do that. Now we're going to do another custom event. Okay, and we are going to do remove widget. Okay, and then we're just going to do a remove. Yeah, remove all widgets of class. And that class will be our piano blueprint okay so this is going to destroy all piano blueprint widgets so when we pass or if we fail we are going to rem actually i didn't even need that new event because we can just do bloop and bloop there we go so whether we pass or fail we're going to remove the widget from the screen okay So that should work. 
And our answer should be Debab. Okay. So let's give that a try. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there there is a um, embarrassing mistake. Okay. That that is yeah. So we've got the puzzle set up. But what we need to do, and I believe the best spot is back in our level br blueprint, is we want to um, set mouse. Uh, we want to do the um, mouse cursor. Um. Set show mouse cursor. That's what we want to do. And the target is the player controller. So we want to get player controller. And we want to say yes, show the mouse cursor. Okay. And we want to copy that. And we want to go over here so that after it removes the widget, we want to also hide the mouse cursor. Okay. Wow, that was that was actually really embarrassing. Okay. So come over here. Oop, there we go. And if we do C D so one, two, three, four, five. And it goes away. Okay. Now if we come back. D E B A B. Ah. Look at that. Let's just make sure that that didn't solve our puzzle. So there's that. So if I go blah, 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 blah. Okay. Our puzzle is solving either way. Okay. So why is our puzzle solving either way? Because that should be breaking our thing. And that index should be... Okay, why is that breaking? Now we got to figure that one out. So, that is working as it should. That is working as it should. Um, so let's get our correct keys. Get. And we'll do a length. Okay. So this way, instead of setting the length, we're actually getting the length. Okay, so this way we make sure that they are getting to be the same length. Okay, just in case that's where I screwed up. So this is starting to look a little, you know, forced together. But that's okay right now. Because it can always be respaced later. Okay, let's see if that has fixed our problem. So we come around and we go boop. D E B A B. That should be our length. Why is it wanting me to enter extra things? Why is it wanting me to add six things instead of five? Two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Hmm.
No, we're going to do this a different way. So we're going to keep that adding, but we're going to get rid of this check. Okay, we're going to check it a different way. So we're not going to check it against its length. We're going to do our own counter. We're going to add a new variable. And we're going to do this key press counter. Okay. And that will be an integer. Okay. And you know what? We are going to now make this a macro so it's not so dirty. So we're going to copy that and we're going to do a new macro. Okay. And we're going to call this key press functions. Could be a function, could be a macro, but whatever. So we're going to add that in here. So we need one of those pins and we need one of those pins. Perfect. Okay, and then what we're going to do in this check is that we are going to then move this over a bit. So we are going to no longer check the um, index number, but we are going to instead do some math. So we're going to set key press counter okay and we are going to get our current key press counter and we are going to add plus one okay so what we're doing is we're just doing some math so every time a key is pressed it goes plus one plus one plus one okay and then we are going to check if key press counter is equal to five key presses. And then we're going to do the exact same stuff we did previously. Okay? If this is true, go and check our results. Okay? And let's try that, see if that works. So that means we have to go back to our event graph now and get rid of all of this. Yay. I love when I make silly mistakes like that. But this will clean up our code significantly, moving that to a macro. So that comes in, that comes in. Yay. I will just straighten that connection. Straighten that connection. And there we go. Why do I keep trying to drag off that first? I don't want to drag off that first. I tell you, sometimes when you're trying to move quickly through this, it just doesn't do you any favors. Okay. Straighten connection. Okay. So now when five keys have been pressed, We're going to check that. Okay. That means we also have to, when we clear this, we have to add another step in here. We're going to set key press counter. We're going to set it to zero so that it resets the count.
Okay. So you know, when we're completed, we have to do another branch. That's that's the issue. So when we complete, we want to do this exact same branch with the exact same result. And this is just going to check our final result. Because that is something that could happen is that we get a final result. And we said, hey, we got to the end and we complete the puzzle instead of actually checking that final result. So yeah, in the previous setup, that's a my bad guys that yes you could have had it so that everything but the last um you know everything but the last key you entered was correct and it would still go so we should have that fixed up by check when it's completed we check that last item and if it equals we run this if not we do our clear okay so now we should come, do one, two, three, four, and five. Really? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, there we go. Now it's working. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so key press counter has to be zero off the bat. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. That is something we have to solve. But now, there we go. Our puzzle is now solvable. It doesn't always come up. Okay. But the first time we do it, the very first time we are getting an issue. So what happens if we set our key presser to equal one as its default value? Does that fix our first time issue? One, two, three, four, five. That would fix our issue. I don't know why we're starting weird like that. Because we're just adding a one count to make it equal five, but whatever. Okay, that one was weird. Because I don't think I entered in the right code. D E B A C. Okay. D E B A. Ah. See, now we broke it with that default value of 1. Or is that my correct input keys? D A B A B. Yeah. Is it still solving the problem wrong if I do the last? D E B A F. Okay, now we're back to this. D E B A C. D E B A A. D E B A something. Okay. That I do not understand. Because we're adding one to the key press counter, which is zero. It starts at zero. That's what it's saying right here. Why it's requiring six key presses when I'm adding one on each key press? That is odd. But hey, like, we, we've got the... We've got the puzzle working, so... That is something I will let... What's it? Rush Jet? Now that we're an hour and a bit into this, I've forgotten his name. Rushjet, yes, so that's that's what we need to do. So so Rushjet can figure out that weird quirkiness. 
but let's do a rundown of our piano puzzle now that we have it finished. So, we have our player. We've got a wall segment for a hidden passageway. And we have our piano. Okay. On the level blueprint, so I'll bring that up. We say, hey, when the trigger box is overlapped, do things. So if the trigger box gets overlapped, we are going to create a widget on the screen. Okay. So we're going to create the widget. We're going to add it to the screen. Next thing we're going to do with that widget is we are going to cast to it. So we're going to act as the widget. And when we're acting as the widget, we're going to set our reference variable. So this way it can actually control the cube. So as the widget, so as a piano prompt widget, we are going to set the reference cube variable with this cube blueprint reference. So that is this guy right here, our cube blueprint. Okay. Then we are going to show the mouse so that people can actually interact with the thingamajog. Okay. So perfect. Good. Then on the piano widget, when it pops up, we have our key presses. Okay, and here's what the key presses do. The key presses make literal text of their, their key press. And remember, this is case sensitive. And then it runs it through this macro. And this macro says, hey, take the key press and add it to a array. Make a counter starting at zero, counting up to five. And when that counter's at five, so when you've pressed five keys, run the key checker. Before you press five keys, it does nothing. Okay, it just lets you continue inputting. Okay, so those are set up for each of the keys with their own make literal text, again, case sensitive text there. And then when that's finished, it runs the key checker. Okay, so it runs key checker. The key checker goes through all the input keys, so everything that's been pressed, and checks it against the correct keys. So, is this current key that you've pressed, or is the first key you pressed equal to the first correct key? Is the second key you've pressed equal to the second correct key? And it loops through for every result, all five of your results, okay? It is then going to, if one of those results is false, reset the whole thing and take your menu away. Okay, so that's your kind of, yeah, you, you've entered your five results, the menu goes away, nothing happened. Okay, or if it's true that it does equal, Yeah, if it's true, we shouldn't take the menu away. So we're going to break that reference. So we're going to break link to remove. So if it's false, it removes everything. If it's true, it does nothing right now because we're going to wait till we get to the end. Okay. No, we do want that to, so, do, 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 do. no, that, that's right, we want it like this, okay. So, that checks and compares the two arrays. And if it gets all the way to the end, we do a final check on the last result. Is this last array element equal to the last array element on the correct keys? And if it is true, we are going to make the cube. So over again, we're casting to that cube to change its properties. And we've got this reference that was set from the level blueprint. And we're gonna make it hidden and we're gonna turn off its collision. And then after we've done all that, we are going to remove the widget 
the piano prompt widget from our screen. So as soon as you enter your five keys and it either checks it and it's false or it checks it and it's true, it's going to remove the menu. Okay. Let's compile, save, and just run through this, make sure it's working one more time. So if we come through, one, two, three, four, five. And the first one always takes six. But the second one, one, two, three, four, five. Try again, it's telling us because we have that. One, two, three, four, five. But if we do the correct one, D E B A B. Then we've got that. Woo! And we can walk through the doorway. Wait, is that not? Do, 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 do. Yeah, that is disappearing. Okay. I just wasn't remembering that. Okay, so what we want to do here is. Hmm. Yeah, like that. This check should not be giving us issues. Okay, so if anybody knows the reasoning for that, great, cool, whatever. Um, but yeah, that check should not be giving us issues. Uh, nice thing about setting up the puzzle in this manner is that if you ever want to change the puzzle, so you can reuse this same puzzle, and you can just change these correct keys. And you can reorder that to whatever you want. And... In here, you can change the checked number. You could even make this another variable. So that out here, you could say, okay, here's the number of presses you're supposed to be able to press. And here's the correct keys that equal up those number of presses and their results. So you could have this very configurable and use this puzzle over and over again in your game. Okay? Actually, that could be really neat that it is a additive tune. So as you go through a music-based game, you keep going further and further in a tune. So you do the first three keys, then the first four keys, then the first eight keys, whatever. And at the end of the game, you have this song that you've done out, which summons something or whatever. That would be an interesting premise of the game. Okay, Rush Jet, I might have to steal your puzzle here that you were working on. Okay. But yeah, that is the piano puzzle um, again why it's not working on the first attempt where it requires six keys I am not sure it should only work require the five that has me a little bit confused but um, otherwise yeah on anything after the first attempt it works so Hey, have at her, try to figure out that little bug glitch, whatever. And that should get your um, piano puzzle up and going with just a little bit of code on the level blueprint and then everything else happening inside of the widget. Your widget is actually your puzzle. Okay? So, I hope that helps, man. Um, yeah, how you had it previously of the... Um, keys booleans this would just tell you if they were pressed so as as long as those keys were pressed it would have your puzzle would have completed whether they're in the correct order or not whereas now comparing it to another array it will only work if they're in the correct order so hopefully that's helped you out please let me know if you've got any other concerns and hey if you Got any other questions you'd like to ask, or got any other interesting puzzle ideas like this, or hey, if you like the YouTube channel here and just want to subscribe, feel free to do so, subscribe to this channel, and um, yeah, join our Discord, which is in a link below, so that you can ask questions directly, and we might even be able to help you in voice chat. So yeah, there is the piano puzzle that Rushjet has been having issues with, that should work for you, man. Thank you, whoever's watched this, and we'll see you later. Goodbye for now.